So now, the now, last two speakers are, are super, super cool. The, the, one I'm about, the person I'm about to introduce, I had the honor of meeting, you know, quite, quite, you know, only about a year, only about a year ago. And, and actually, the, but he's sponsored loads of events that I've gone to, so it's like a, a myth and a legend, basically, how I met him. It's quite funny. But basically, Sanjeev Bal is, um, is the owner of a garment, garment, garment factory called Cytex, and they've actually now become industry leaders in everything that they're doing. From, and I've, I had the honor of actually, actually going to their mill in the, in, in the summer together with the, like, sort of the Kingpin's crew, which was really, really fun. But I'll let Sanjeev begin. But thank you, thank you so much for your time. This is, is it on? I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah, it is now. Yeah. Well, before I start, I just wanted to check with you all, and you can raise your hands up, and let me know how many of you all have really connected within yourselves, and I mean connected with your own inner voice. None? There you go. I got one with an inner voice. I got a few more. OK. And um, amongst the few of you who have realized you have an inner voice, I would like to understand if anybody out of you all have learned to trust that inner voice. Anybody? Brilliant. Amazing. Excellent. All right, then. So um, 19 years ago, Cytex was just like any other company on the planet. Uh, we built our business on a very simple model. One, one gene, a five-pocket gene, built out of one factory and one mill in China. We built a small collection, just a handful of us. No second guessing, I'm an Indian, not shy. Packed a bag with these genes, knocked on the doors in New York, in Broadway, until we got our first order. <clears throat> From that point in time till now, everything is just a blur. Very, very quickly, we found ourselves operating in nine countries. Countries like China, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Egypt, Madagascar, Jordan, um, Mauritius, and then finally in, um, in Vietnam. Now, we also had this unique opportunity to work with over 50 factories. Now, through all my travels, um, interestingly, what I found that stood out, unfortunately, was um, a system which was riddled with what I call modern-day slavery. Now, what I could really see around me was environmental damage. I could see very clearly that we belonged in a system that did not recognize you know, hunger and poverty. And um, you know, I've seen loads of places with uh, inadequate sanitation. And I had to participate in a society that was very exclusive. And we all had to pretend, play this uh, game of um, seeing no evil, speaking no evil, and hearing no evil. Now, over a period in time, I think the noise got louder. And between anger and confront confrontation and you know, deliberations, um, what really stood out was there was no point fighting the system. But there could be, we thought, a unique opportunity to reset the whole landscape. So come 2010, what we did was we quickly disbanded everything that we had built, literally, because it just didn't make any sense anymore. What we did was, we finally chose one location, and that's Vietnam. And why Vietnam? Because I found that country to have a very unique system which allowed women to have equal representation, their voice was heard, and they were treated equally. The economy was healing. And for more than one reason, you know, I went with my gut, and I thought this was the best place to be in. What we thought was, let's, let's start from scratch and build a brand new theory of change. And in the process of setting up this brand new theory of change, 
we had to build a brand new formula, a formula that extended way beyond cost. And the only input that we had to add to this mathematical equation was a very simple, a very simple um, term. It was called positive impact. And at that point in time, we did not know what the end result would be. It was an experiment. But we were hoping that one day, this positive impact added to cost could probably lead to a model of prosperity. You gotta put your money before you, know, you start rambling off. So what we did was we took 1% of our top line revenue and we plowed those funds into hunger and poverty elevation programs. We just tore down those white picket fences and we went down deep into the community. And we started participating in their lives. <laughs> Several years later today, you know, one of the key byproducts that we accrued from this system is empathy. I consider Cytex to be an extremely empathetic organization, and you'll see why. Now, besides the 1%, what we thought is, let's tackle two problems. So we created two buckets. In one bucket, we put energy, and in the other bucket, we put water. These two buckets contained two very, very precious resources that our planet is totally dependent on. With water, I mean, today we recycle 98% of our water. The other 2%, we evaporate. So we, we, we fought really hard to stay a zero-discharge facility. Interestingly, by deploying innovation, green chemistry, and radical resource productivity, today we find that we have reduced the amount of water we, we consume by approximately 30%. That's about 300 cubic meters a day. We've been having this battle with the government to give us a license to export this water to drought-stricken areas. And this is something that we are really passionate about and we'll fight till the end until we get this license, and we really get this water across to where we need to get it. Now, one of the most hazardous things that people don't talk about is sludge. Sludge is a byproduct from um, you know, the wastewater plants. People come, pick up the sludge. You've got to pay them for it, by the way. And it ends up in a landfill. Landfills with sludge, they continuously contaminate the water table. This is how reckless we are. So what we did is we took a step back, re-engineered uh, our chemistry, and we produced non-hazardous sludge. With this non-hazardous sludge, we have the ability to make bricks. With these bricks, we build homes for the deserving, and we also ended up building a LEED-certified factory with this waste. Interestingly, we never, we never ventured into it with uh, an Excel sheet, with P&Ls, and trying to figure out whether it's going to make money or not. But after six years, what we found is we had really, truly broken even. We had recovered our investments. The other bucket that I was talking about was even more simpler. We just went after the low-hanging fruit. We set up a very simple aerial drying system which did not need energy. So we started drying our jeans up in the air. We started, um, you know, just recycling all of our steam and heat, threw away the fossil fuels, picked up rice husk, furniture shavings, bonded them together, and built our own biomass material, and built this boiler that drives energy through waste. In our grid, we started investing into renewables with solar. And we started integrating step by step, um, you know, solar power into electrical grids. Six years later, we found we broke even here as well. So we sat down and we said to ourselves, now that we are in the black, what do we do with the, the savings? We've just piloted a program which is yielding incredible results. 
We started gifting electric bikes to our workers. Now, it definitely helps us to reduce our footprint, our carbon footprint. But the other impact is that the workers do not have to spend money on fuel. And the results that we're getting back, I mean, it's amazing. Amazing, uh, you know, labor turnover is down. Uh, there's a lot more communicative processes and protocols that have been set up in the company. And people truly appreciate being part of uh, the organization. We've been encouraging our workforce to plant trees and educating them as to how important it is that we continuously you know, create a carbon neutralization strategy. It's all in our hands. These are all very simple things. In front of our factory now, we have a huge forest. A, you know, a forest that's going to make Cytex a carbon neutral company by 2023. This is one of my favorite projects. We took 5,000 jeans, rejected jeans, tore them apart, built 5,000 uh, shoes out of those. In a collaboration and partnership with Puma, both the companies came to an agreement that we will not utilize the money for commercial purposes. It would only be not for profit. It was fantastic. We raised $250,000. And with that $250,000, we built an orphanage. A hundred and fifty children live there today with dignity. These are some of them. Unconditionally, they are, they are often at a, a job at Cytex the day they turn 18. And that's why, you know, I was saying Cytex is an incredibly empathetic organization. We didn't plan this. Trust me, this wasn't a plan. This was only, we, we just kept on doing what we felt was right. Forward uh, wind. Earlier this year, we were certified as a B Corp. A B Corp is a business that works for purpose and profits, balances both. It's the highest standard of verified social and environmental stewardship. It holds you accountable, both with the public interface as well as legal accountability. And it just all came together that we were truly an organization that turned out to be a force for good. Now, we quickly forget about what happened yesterday, and we never rest on what we did. 2019 onwards, we had to reconstruct the future. Of course, you know, we proved to ourselves, you know, that a responsible organization can be profitable. We prove to ourselves that waste can be an input you know, for a factory. I forgot to mention, we have a farming department, 40% of all our land. Uh, you have greenhouse, uh, I mean, uh, greenhouses. We have three hydroponic containers, and we grow our own food. We also found that factories don't necessarily have to produce genes. The rest of the land can produce food, food that can be used to fight hunger. Trees can be planted to fight climate change. And we also learned that we could, we could build communities, communities which would be inclusive, and that would help to reduce inequalities. So we said, what's next? So yes, a business can be a force for good and a business can be sustainable, but we've got to be in touch and in tune with what's happening today and what tomorrow stands for itself. And there were a lot of these big words that were floating around. So we took all these big words and we just threw them against a wall and we said, all right, let's, let's try and figure this one out. 
big words like predictive, just in time, customization, upcycling, re commerce, the consumer, acquire them, retain them, recurring revenue. A lot of big words. It took us a while to figure this whole thing out, and we said, all right, let's take all these big words and connect these big words. Let's put these into little circles and widgets, and let's, let's build our own theory of circularity. So this is what we got right now. Um, right at the top, we have a partnership with a cotton farm. This cotton farm is... Um, it's, uh, it's carbon positive. We're building a mill in Vietnam as I speak. Um, this mill would be, be vertical, totally integrated, from spinning to weaving to dyeing to finishing. The fabric that we build from a mill would get directly integrated into a manufacturing plant in Vietnam. And this fabric would also be used in a soon-to-open factory in Los Angeles. The materials that we would produce would also get injected into a platform that just launched two weeks ago. MWE stands for, it's a marketplace for emerging entrepreneurs. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. You know, people talk about wholesale, and they keep on saying wholesale is dead. And people talk about retail, and they say retail is dead. And everybody talks about online, online, online. But our theory of change is wholesale is not dead, and retail is not dead. It's just that the person who's been empowering it needs to be redefined. So what we've created is a brand new system which would allow anybody from a kid who's two years old down to somebody who's 90 years old to own their own business. So on this platform, what you would have is you could, you could come in, you, could, um, you would have access to inventory, be it T-shirts or jeans or shoes, whatever, all produced at Cytex, so you know where it came from. And um, you would have the ability to use the libraries to, to design, or you could come up with your own creative art and make something of your own. We would ship it, manage the logistics, do the marketing for you. You could, you could state your own price and make a profit. I think that's the new wholesaler and that's the new retailer. It's people like you who are going to change the dimension and the face of our business. We also invested in a project in Los Angeles. It's called uh, Italian Repair. What Italian Repair does is they take um, you know, garments from landfills or wherever, upcycle it, and make it into a piece of art. It's sold at a much higher price, so the value generation is much, much higher than where the journey began on the first purchase. You must look them up. It's incredible stuff. Two weeks ago, a factory in Thailand took off with an incredible technology. We managed to um, patent this as well. Uh, we have the ability to take waste textiles, crush it into nanoparticles, fuse it and bond it together, and build a substance which is a substitute for wood. It's sexier than wood, and it would definitely compete with granite as well as marble. We're building furniture, we're building facades, flooring, name it with whatever application that you can think of that, um, that wood could do. Now, all this needs to be verified. So we invested in a company called Fibertrace. And Fibertrace is unique because it allows embedding a pigment. It's a DNA tracking device, similar to what you have in banknotes. But this one's built for fibers. So everything that we make, right from the cotton farm downwards and upwards, would be embedded with this material. With a flick of an iPhone on your product, you could visualize through augmented reality the whole journey. A journey that would allow you to see where it was made, who made it, how was it made, and narratives, and stories that could be told to empower you to make the right choice and the right decisions. 
a few slides on you know, the components. That's good earth cotton, carbon positive, the mill in Vietnam with 40% of the land you know, for green, um, greenhouses. Um, I'll come back to this a little later. I don't think it's going to alarm me, so you better see it. Oh, it did. Somebody listens to me. But um, yeah, so this is a glimpse of uh, the store. Um, the, the model also incorporates um, a physical space, which is um, a digitized touch point, allows you to customize on demand. Uh, that's a little bit about Italian repair. And I was talking to you about you know, the boards, uh, you know, what we're upcycling. This, this is something, what it looks like. That's the living testimony. It's uh, the facade of the Christian Louboutin store in uh, Dubai. It's weathered, uh, you know, there's been no rain and storms, but at least it's been shielded from the sun. That's one of the scanners that would allow at the B2B level to trace uh, the pigments within the within the garments, that's fiber trace. Anyway, that's our theory of change for the future. Um, I've not signed any NDAs with myself, so I'm at totally free liberty to, to share everything. Well, one thing we take pride in is we are a completely open sourced organization. We're completely transparent, completely open, and um, you know we, we, we share everything openly. Um, what has Gulliver's Travels got to do with this? So here's what I'm going to leave you all with. I always encourage people to travel, travel extensively. Um, travel extensively to learn and feel human nature and human behavior. Be prepared. Be prepared to get tied down. But do not get tied down for too long. Be in a position to untie those knots, knots of ideology, and, you know, wax the world. In your travels, do visit some animal farms. Animal farms which will show you societies, different societies, whether they are capitalists, socialists, fascists, or even communists. It's very important to engage with each one of them. We live in a brave new world, so get used to it. Get used to a world where a country can spend $686 billion on military, but yet only $60 billion on education. A brave new world where 783 million of us live below the poverty line. A world where 1% of the richest control 82% of the value generation. And a world where just 20 fossil fuel companies account for one third of the greenhouse gases that are emitted. A world which will, by 2050, have about 10 billion of us 143 million of them could be refugees from climate. A world where 26,000 species get extinct every year. So this is the dystopian truth. So I would recommend you look at building your own utopian society. A society which has equal respect and opportunity for every individual on the planet and guarantees safety security, and allows human beings to live without fear. In your journey, learn to be happy. Happiness will dawn on you. Trust your inner voice. Listen to it. Don't listen to the noise. There's so much noise out there. Shut it out. There's so many directions. The path that people have followed, it's not necessary to follow that path. Listen to your voice and follow your own path. Learn to overcome obstacles. You'll have a lot of them. They'll be thrown right in front of you, like Andrew mentioned, chairs. 
There'll be a lot of them. But listen to your inner voice, have trust and faith in it, and you'll overcome those obstacles. Look down, don't look up. Look down and wake up every morning and say thank you for all the things that you have that most human beings do not have. Be content. Be compassionate. Be happy. You making other people happy will eventually make you truly happy. Live a life of purpose, because one day we're all going to go away from here. The only thing that we can leave here is a legacy. A legacy that our future generations must be proud of. So once again, listen to your voice, cut out the noise. Be chivalrous. Don't forget about chivalry. Live in an imaginary world. Dream. Have your own visions. And don't be afraid when they call you a mad person who's chasing down windmills. Go chase those windmills. It's important. That's all I got for you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, first of all, for coming. This poor guy is not is quite ill, and he still came. So what an absolute trooper. And not only that, he gave an absolutely amazing talk, and very inspiring talk as well. I'm sure to the students that are, that are here. Who wants to ask Sanjeev some questions about the, the world's most sustainable de denim battery, or law laundry as well. Go for it. Garment, garment, garment producer, excuse me. Okay. Hello, hi, yeah. thank you for that inspiring talk. That's really nice. Um, basically, I wanted to ask you um, how you feel the oncoming automation revolution and the on-demand economy that people are talking about um, do you feel that that would disrupt Satex and the work that Satex does? You know what? Every day when we wake up in the morning, the first thing that we think is, how do we disrupt ourselves? Honestly. Um, you know, it, it's, it's about the noise. You know, the, the more you concentrate on what others are doing, you're just going to get distracted. If you, if you have your own SWAT, and you believe in your own strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats, then you have to be in a position to disrupt yourselves. So yeah, so technology is going to play a really key role. There's no question about that. We're building this factory in Los Angeles. Um, you know, in Vietnam, we produce 1,000 genes a day. I mean, we produce 20,000. But let's say for that first 1,000, you need approximately 250 people to make 1,000 genes. So the past five years, we've incubated technology, a lot of it, robotics, artificial intelligence. Um, you know, we just bought some machines from Aliche, you know, for our LA plant as well. So what we did is, it's not only about technology and machines. It's people like you who are going to make the difference. It's machines on the left-hand side and the people who operate them on the right-hand side. You need to build intelligence into the system. So for the past five years, we've invested in not only the machines, but also the humans who are going to impart intelligence into those systems. Now, in LA, what's going to happen is, and you're more than welcome to come and see it, we would be making that same 1,000 genes with about 99 people. So 2.5 times less with technology. Once that is done, that'll be phase one. And the goal is, how do we get to make that, those 1,000 pairs of genes with 50 human beings. That's the internal mandate. Now, all this you can do with technology, but we have to outthink the future. And we are outthinking the future by building this technology to be deployed and utilized by people who have disabilities. You know, we have to be very inclusive. We cannot be exclusive. So if you're talking about automation, the first thing that we have to think about is how do we automate our processes by people who do not have equal abilities? And I'm really proud with our team, the way they work round the clock, to keep on re-engineering one step at a time, nonstop, day after day. And we do believe that we have created a system 
where we could automate 65% of our processes, and these could be managed by people with different abilities. Amazing. I hope that helps. OK, any more questions? Oh, one question over there. Um, thank you for the talk. It was super inspiring. Um, I've just got a quick question about your slide on size cycle. Is that how I pronounce it? So how you shred down the clothes and then you bind them again into a new material. I've seen quite a few materials like this, and most of them are kind of binded together through like a poly-based, polymer-based resin. Is yours binded together similar to that? And if so, how Great do you recycle question. it afterwards? Fantastic question. Great question. So yeah, we, uh, we thought about that very deeply. We did not want to touch those resins and compounds. No way. That's totally off the, the charts for us. That's not our DNA. So we, we, the secret sauce and the secret recipe is, is rubber. Rubber. So we took natural rubber, and we created an, an organic paste out of that, uh, that rubber. It took us two and a half years to figure it out. But right now, it's clean, purely organic, with nothing. It's, it's a process which integrates heat. It's a process which in integrates bonding at, at super high temperature and pressure. That has collaborated extremely well with the chemistry that we've deployed into the rubber. No resins, no rubbish in it. Amazing. <laughs> Any, Any more other questions? Sure. What's your opinion on um, work-life balance? Because when you're so passionate about something, it keeps you going. And sometimes you realize, OK, I'm overworking. I need to step a bit, like a step back and Another see. Another fabulous question. I love it. <laughs> love it. You know that work-life balance, like you got to listen to your inner voice? It's like what happened to me this weekend. Got, with all the flying and everything, I, I, was, I was in bed. I was totally knocked out. So that's when you take a pause, and a friend like Andrew will say, hey, that's a sign for you. And yes, I do overwork. I am a workaholic. There's no question about that. Um, I've dedicated my life to a purpose, right? And I get my joy out of it. Trust me, I don't do it for money. And the balance that I'm looking for is, is the utopian balance that I fight with every day. So it's different strokes for different folks. And uh, you know, for some people in France, it starts with 32 hours a week and wearing uh, yellow vests on the weekend. If that's a uh, work-life balance, so be it. But um, yeah, I mean, it totally, de it totally depends what you think is normal and what has been uh, you know, set out in the past versus what do you think you, know, you have to do in this limited time that we all are here for. So yeah, I mean, I'm not good at it. Not good at it at all. OK, so any more questions? I think we're done. So thank you again to uh, 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 Sanjeev. <laughs> Quick thing also. Also, um, uh, no, pleasure. Um, Sanjeev made it possible that this event was free. So you know, he, he, he's, done a lot, he's done a lot for everyone, and he's done a lot, done a lot for this, this actual event as well. So thank you so, so much.